in this video, we're showing you the craziest exterior build I think I've ever seen. And I've got the owner right here. What's your name? Enoch. Enoch, thanks for coming by, dude. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Me. So this is not just a normal Xterra. It's got some of the most insane mods. Talk to me about the basis of this build. All right, so the basis of this build was how we could travel to all of the national parks in America. Um, so I built out a rig to essentially facilitate that and ended up with this beautiful uh, Xterra build out. You know, I did a couple inch lift, some 33s, kind of your standard mid-level off-roader and we've been able to get everywhere we've, we've wanted to. So when you say all the national parks, like how, how many in total? Uh, so we've done 52 out of the 63 national parks so and, far. And how long has it taken? It's taken uh, almost three years. Wow, so you've lived out of this full time for three years. Yes, yes. That's crazy, yeah. really, really crazy. So what, what year is your Xterra? So it's uh, 2009, Okay. Uh, the uh, X model with the four wheel drive. And then um, I've really done pretty much nothing to it. So you know, it's been pretty solid? Yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, I've, I've had very minor repairs on it, and we're about to hit uh, 250,000 miles. Two, what did you buy it at? Uh, 130. Wow, so you've put, that's a lot of miles yeah. you've put on this puppy, yeah. wow. So uh, walk me through it. So what's this, uh, what's this paint you got going on here? So this is a uh, Raptor liner mixed with uh, just some paint. Uh, it's like a tank green kind of color. Um, and then we did uh, Raptor liner black on the bumpers. Um, yeah, it came out really good. The the it's super strong. Like it's I've been really impressed with how many times I bounced off of it. <laughs> so I see you've got like a few scuffs here. Have you taken it on some trails and stuff? Too? Oh yeah, you, yeah. Oh yeah. We uh, so like say last year we did about fifty thousand miles, and I would say about twenty five to thirty thousand miles of that was all off road. Wow. Yeah, we tr we primarily traverse the country as much as possible on dirt. Who uh, who did your lift kit? Uh, it is from All Dogs Off-Road out of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. And it's been pretty good? It's been amazing. Yeah? Yeah. It's, they're upper control arms. It's a Coney uh, 90 millimeter Raid shocks. And then, uh, yeah, that's... And then in the back, the back's actually really unique. So it's uh, parabolic leaf springs. Okay. It's only two... Le it's a two leaf pack system. Wow. It's uh, pretty popular in Australia. But uh, uh, All Dogs is kind of bringing it over to uh, the United States and they're offering it in like Nissans and Toyotas, you know, kind of that where they're starting with them and uh, kind of moving out from there. But they're, they're super smooth. That's unreal. Now the craziest part of this build is what's going on up top. So walk me through yes. what you did here. So we had an adventure trailer before this and basically Delia came up to me, which is my partner and said, hey, I want to be inside. Okay. How do I facilitate that? I'm going to cut a roof in my cut a hole in my roof, and uh, and then cut a hole in the bottom of the tent, <laughs> and I married them together, sealed it up, made it waterproof, air airtight, and uh, and then I started building out the cabinets on the inside. So what are some of the pros of this setup? So you can get into the tent without getting out of the, the rig, right? Exactly. Yep. Wow. So, so that's that's probably the biggest pro is that <laughs> that if if she doesn't want to go outside, she doesn't have to. OK, so for the last two, two and a half years, we have been living outside like 100 percent. You live. We lived outside. Now, so no matter how bad the weather was, we were in it. What is the uh, the, the, the tent manufacturer? So this is a big country four by four. OK. And they're out of uh, South Africa. Uh, the main reason I chose this tent is because it, it's one of the few tents on the market that, that has a welded corners. Mm. Um, so it made it a lot stronger and more rigid for the case, you know, for the case that I'm doing here. Now, was this tent intended to have a coal hole cut in the bottom of it? It was not. <laughs> okay. By no means. By no means. So how is it mounted? Can you kind of explain how you keep it watertight and airtight? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so what I did was I used uh, truck camper topper uh, foam. Hmm. in between them and then with the Nissan Xterra they all come with a stock rack and that rack has about 36 riveted bolts so I essentially used every single one of those bolts holes. Wow. so it's it's and then I added about six more rib nuts to it and then uh, yeah I have it so it's all bolted down through rib nuts and is it been pretty good pretty waterproof over the last three years Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We've had no issues. Wow. Um, so this right here, we're, it's going on about three months of this style build. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So over the past three months, we've had no issues with water. It's been super tight. We actually finished this up 
and I cut the hole and married these together in 10 days right before Mountain West, or sorry, right before uh, Expo West. Oh, super cool. Yeah. And did you see any like loss in rigidity by cutting a giant hole in your roof? Not that I noticed, yeah. but I think that's mainly because of the, the, the type of vehicle the Xterra is. Right. Um, there was no structural supports through that whole section. Hmm. The only thing that was there were a couple of rigidity straps to, for like safety for rollover. Gotcha. Um, so when I cut those, I had no flexing, nothing moved. And then, and that's why I also went with a welded camper top. So that way I'm, my thought process was is to regain some rigidity once it's all bolted together. So this tent must have been super heavy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was two people like our friend Braxton was with us and he helped me get it up there. Cause it's, it's, uh, 180 pounds. <gasps> Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah. So now that we cut a giant hole in it, I'm thinking it's more like 150. <laughs> but yeah, not too bad. Now walk me through the build out in the back here. Yeah. So uh, so I just finished this literally like two weeks ago. Um, so I have an induction stove up here, and then the sink here. Uh, we have a Dometic Go water pump mm. that we just you can pull out and you just kind of set right here, and then we connect. I have a 10 gallon water tank in here. Okay. Um, and then it connects to that, and it just runs right down. And then I have a hose is going to be connected in the wheel well, and that's that's where the, the gray water from the sink will drain out onto the tire. And how has uh, the setup been working like off grid? How long can you kind of stay um, before you have to return to civilization? So my guess, because we haven't like gone full bore yet with the new build, um, but I'm roughly the the fridge is our limiter. Really. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like how much food and how much water can we carry? So 10 gallons is about five days before we'd have to find water source. And then the fridge can hold about two weeks worth oh. of food. Mm -hmm. So really we play with that kind of like week to two weeks before we have to re-engage in some way with civilization. And what do you got going on in here? So just your basic chest. Oh, Nothing sweet. too crazy. Don't mind that. <laughs> got some got some cool little RCs and yeah. uh, we got like our scuba gears in there, you know, kind of our uh, adventure stuff. Seems weird talking about scuba gear in Colorado, but I, know, I guess right? if you've been living off grid for three years. <laughs> so where are some of the, the highlights that you've been to? Oh man, everywhere. Yeah? Um, honestly, the uh, the Pacific, the PW, mm -hmm. absolutely amazing in the summertime. You get up there like that, the North Cascades, it's just so, it's just, it's out of the world. Like you, you've got rainforest, you got high Sierra, you've got like full snow cap mountains, beautiful glacier lakes. Like that's a really, really beautiful area. And then one of our favorite spots that we've been doing the last couple of years is in the winter time, we like to go down to Baja. Oh, nice. Yeah. And yeah. we typically will spend, you know, anywhere between a couple of weeks to a few months down in Baja and just kind of, you know, put around and love that experience experience as much as the culture as we can now if you find like a good spot in Baja is it a pain to have to like fold it all back up if you want to go like, no drive to dinner or so so for me to to put this all back together uh it takes me less than five minutes wow it's like quick huh? hit, hit the road yep so yeah cool. this morning like obviously all of our stuff was in there so I didn't have to repack that but the uh the top part comes down in in less than two minutes push it in, put the clamp down, you're done. You know, I really like this. Case, can you shoot this? I love this kind of um, almost like... Oh, thank bowl. you. Yeah, what's the story there? So so that is a tweed fabric that I picked up from Joann's. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I, I custom made it, cut it, fit it to all the spots, and I used uh, Super 90 3M to uh, stick it all to the sides. No, it looks really good. Thank Nissan you. Nissan should do that from the factory write them a note well they should keep building the Xterra so <laughs> yeah, what, that's true <laughs> why, why did you start with an Xterra um so I I had an Xterra before this but like the real the real main reason is I've always been a huge Nissan guy mm. like my first vehicle that I got when I was 16 was a old 84 720 hard body and I took that thing everywhere all the places everyone said it couldn't go I took it and so when I got this I just it felt the same way I did minimal modifications and it was ready to hit the trail, you know, and just have a have a great time. Like I, we we took this over Mango Pass and Death Valley. Yeah, yeah. With highway tires, completely stock. So two. And it did great. Two hundred fifty thousand miles, and like really nothing is broken over the last. Yeah, uh, I I did the timing chain because the the guides started whining, mm -hmm. um, and uh, other than that, I've had a, a crank shaft sensor, which is like all of a 15 minute job. 
and I had a uh, rack and pinion went out. Oh yeah. So that was the biggest thing I think was the rack and pinion. And I did everything myself. All the work has been 100% done by me. Hi cute, what's your dog's name? This is Ella. Hi Ella. Um, she's, a, she's a rescue. We got her about a year ago. Does she do pretty well? She's in really well. Oh, like in the car, yeah? Yeah, yeah. She doesn't like other dogs, but she likes people, so that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, um, you got the manual transmission. Yes. Did you have to go through a clutch? Uh, I have done a clutch at 170,000 miles, I yeah. think, is when I did the clutch. Yeah. So. Is, there, is there any place that this hasn't taken you where you're like, wow, I need lockers and I need more than this has? No. I mean, I, we've done Poison Spider. Wow. <laughs> Hell's Revenge, we've done uh, Stillbender. Jeez, um, with your house. Yeah, with my house, <laughs> yeah. We actually have a video on our Instagram of the, the drop. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we actually cleared all the stacked rocks out before we did it. Did so you really? It looks, it's nice. It and uh, really if people good. want to follow your adventure, what's your Instagram? Yeah, so our Instagram is uh, Mo Leisure X Ventures, and we also have YouTube, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that fun stuff, but primarily all of our stuff is on Instagram. Dude, this is freaking cool. So. Yeah. Is this going to be something you're going to keep trucking along with three years? Are you? Yes. Yeah. So, so once we're done with all the national parks, which will be next year, we will be starting the Pan American Highway. Oh, wow. Going from Prudhoe Bay to Ushuaia, uh, Argentina. Wow. What a life. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's our goal. If I can, you know, make it work like anything else, you know, monetary always comes into play. But uh, other than that, I think uh, we're, we're capable and we're willing. Are you going to stick with the Xterra or are you going to... Yes. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Yep. I am 100% going to stick with this one. I My plan with this is to hit a million miles. You want to hit a million miles with it? I want to hit a million miles on, on that motor and this chassis. That's a cool goal. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching, dude. This is this is such a cool thank video. You, I really I appreciate, appreciate this. Um, have you used a snorkel? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we, we, we were in uh, Arkansas. Uh, in the up in the Ozarks and it had been raining for I don't know about three weeks on us and We were doing a, it's called the car wash trail. Yeah, and there's a bunch of water crossings through that and a creek crossing That was supposed to be this wide was the size of a river oh, shoot. and there was it was go this way or You know go all the way back like two days. So we we went through and That was a trip man. The, the water came up Wow. Over the top. I was going like five miles an hour, yeah. and the back end actually lifted and started kind of, kind of like floating around, floating a around in the back. And the front tires were just like grabbing the river rock. You could just hear the river rock going. Tuk, 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 tuk. That's crazy. Yeah. What a cool story. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, this was a lot of fun. And you're going to be at Overland uh, Expo Mountain West, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you want to check out the rig, yeah. be sure to head out there this weekend. We'll see you in the next video.